successful shows on Broadway. It's the hottest ticket. One of my favorite Broadway shows. 19 different productions around the world in seven languages. Simply the most astounding and phenomenal theatrical experience you will ever have. One of the great hit shows of all time. The most unique show ever performed. Remarkable experience. Most fantastic show. 63 million people. And it's truly become a phenomenon. By the summer of 1994, Lion King is a giant hit, and because it's existed as a film, as books, as, as music, it, it ends up in people's homes and then touches them so much because of its theatrical experience. The question was, how does the audience know where to focus? The dimensionality of theater allows the audience to focus on the puppet and forget about the puppeteer. I believed in that. As a director, you're always looking for the abstraction of what the whole is. It's the circle. It's the circle of life. It's the sun. It's Mufasa's head. If you look at Julie's original designs for the mask, you'll see a series of circles. And then this is how she interpreted that design into a physical mask, which she sculpted. One of the reasons why The Lion King worked was that it was a good collaboration. Leboam's influence on this project is so enormous. Everybody has a deep emotional reaction to it. I mean, people start crying at the opening of a play. I have never seen anything like it. The idea of having to put a wildebeest stampede on the stage, yes, I'd love to try that. People who have touched the Lion King and its texture, this tapestry of the Lion King, are deeply moving to me. I would love to come back and see it again, like five times over. Wow, that's all I can say is wow. I loved it, all the sounds and music, it was great. Every time you see it, you see something new. This is a real Broadway stage. We're gonna pick one of you to be in the Lion King tonight. Please welcome the cast of The Lion King. And now, a special performance from The Lion King. You know, I can't Still hear the great. beginning of that song without crying. An all-new Oka, the spectacular Lion King. Yes, 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 yes. King has been roaring on Broadway. There are currently seven productions running around the world. It is time. Remember who you are. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage the cast of The Lion King. Bongi Dumar. Lindaway Delamini. Nduma 
Adela. Nteri Seng Nikayla. Joel Carey. Adrian Walker. Didi Magne and Michael Henry. Tinguyama, Tinguyama Bala. Tinguyama, Tinguyama Bala. Light and the spirit of life calling. Oh, oh, yo. So pleased to welcome our moderator for this special Toxic Google event. You loved him in In the Heights on Broadway. He was Tony nominated for his role as George Washington in a little musical you might have heard of called Hamilton, and currently stars on the CBS hit show Bull. And of course, one of the original cast members of The Lion King. Please join me in welcoming Christopher Jackson. Hey! Thank you very much for having me here today, Google! Somebody told me when I was walking in here that, that I shouldn't say, hey, Google. <laughs> that something crazy would happen, but you turned your phone off, your phone's off already, right? I thought I was gonna be funny. <laughs> okay, good night. Uh, in the last 100 years, more than 10,000 shows have opened on Broadway. Do you know how many of them have run longer than The Lion King? Two. Here are a few other amazing things uh, you didn't know about The Lion King. Uh, tonight, the cast will play performance 8,338. Placed end to end, that's like playing The Lion King 24 hours a day, seven days a week, from right now until March, March of 2020. <laughs> the show's played on every continent except Antarctica, because penguins. Um, 
And 90 million people have seen the show, more than the populations of Switzerland, Ireland, Portugal, and Britain combined. That's a lot of people. Uh, thank you for having me here today. Can we give it up for our wonderful cast? <laughs> Once more. So one, one more thing that you may not know, uh, uh, one of the performers up here today opened The Lion King with me at the New Amsterdam Theater in 1997. She performed in the show last night and has been there for everything in between. Lindy Way Lamini. <laughs> right? <laughs> uh, now, it says here on the cue card that uh, I can tell a personal opening anecdote here uh, about his, my experience, his, mine, experience with the show. Um, I was 21 uh, when I was hired for The Lion King, and I think rehearsals had been going on for about three, what, three days? Three days before, uh, I, I, on the fourth day, was hired an hour before uh, the first rehearsal, uh, and that was how my Broadway career started. Uh, Tom Schumacher walked up to me after my callback, and in the room says, congratulations, you just booked your first show you have an hour before you have to report to rehearsal upstairs. <laughs> ah! So I called my mother, who was teaching school at the time, and I made the secretary patch uh, my call into her classroom, and I said, Mom, um, I'm on Broadway. I don't know what that means. I don't know what The Lion King is really gonna, what, what to expect, but I'm gonna be in a Broadway show. And she said, ah! And uh, her class probably got out of a lot of homework that day. Um, <laughs> Tom Schumacher, the producer of The Lion King, says that it's a show that speaks to everyone because it's about what happens on Earth after we leave it. The song you, that performed just now, He Lives in You, and the reprise, They Live in You, is a perfect example of this sentiment. Um, why is it that you think that this show resonates with so many people? Well, I'm gonna have to borrow something that Julie Taymor said earlier this week. Always a good she thing. She came by to visit the cast and she kind of gave us some motivational words and talked about the process when it first began. And she said something that stayed with me and that's that the show, the story is something that everyone can relate to. No matter their background, no matter where they're from, no matter their age, they can uh, relate to some part of that story and I think that's why it's had such longevity. Yeah. And I guess to add on that is, uh, you know, uh, Lion King is not one of your stories like, you know, um, what is it, um, um, Cinderella and all of that. This is a story about the life that you're living, the sadness. We've all gone through sadness. We've all gone through, you know, uh, bad times. Uh, we've gone uh, through betrayal in our lives. And there's love in, into the story, too. So it's, it's the life that we all are living, you know, on, in an everyday life. Are there any uh, examples of... The, 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 the sadness or the joy um, in which the show now speaks to you? Have you guys experienced that either in performing the show or just right. the parallels that, that uh, you found in life? Uh, I lost my sister to bone cancer last year and uh, the first performance back going into the show, um, like when, when Mufasa is singing to his son and he's talking to his son about how he, one day he's going to die, um, but if you look into the stars, you'll be able to see not only me, but you'll be able to see everyone who has come from me, my parents, my, their parents before them. Um, so I, I, I thought I was going to be okay, and I just was breaking down while singing the song. Um, but then when it came around again to do the reprise, They Live in You, or um, He Lives in You, sorry, um, I saw this light come out. And I was just—I just looked at it, and it started to spread. I was like, "That's my sister right there, telling me it's going to be okay. She's with me, and uh, you know, she's always going to be with me, and she's in me right now." So, yeah. and from that from that moment on, I think I understood the show on a deeper level. You know, it's just—it's uh, it, a beautiful show, but once you experience loss, it uh, it speaks to you on another level. Yeah. Yeah, for me, I think. Uh, I have the similar situation like uh, Michael. Uh, I've already lost uh, three members of my family while I'm in the show for 20 years. Uh, and being part of this family, you know, you have people who support you when you're going through something. I remember we were at half hour call just before we go on stage. 
and uh, the stage manager came in the dressing room while I'm putting on makeup, ready to go. Uh, and then they told me the news that my father has passed right before I go on stage. And I remember that day I was really doubting. I was just torn apart. And I know my father was very supportive of me as a young girl from South Africa. He let us leave South Africa at the age of 18 years old to come to the States to pursue our career. So I know that if I don't perform that day, I just wanted to feel his presence. And I know that when I go on, he will be happy. If I didn't go on, that's not what you know he wanted me to do. So I went on on stage that day. And I uh, remember doing, it was hard to do eulogy. There's a eulogy scene when, uh, you know, we, uh, Mufasa's death. And then it was hard, but I kept going. And then we came on and started singing, um, uh, He Lives in You. At that moment, you know, I could just, I remember just looking at the audience and I saw a vision, I saw a, somebody sitting in the audience. And I kept blinking because I was thinking, that's my dad. You know, immediately I connected with that. And then as soon as we do reprise, I had so much joy because that number in the show uplifts people, you're dancing, you're happy, you're letting the audience know that no matter what happens to you, it's going to be okay. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a circle of life, uh, you know. it move, You know, we all move on and people are born. I experienced the birth of my daughter while I was in the show. So... For me, it's been both happy times and sad times. But because Lion King is a circle of life, you know, it keeps you... Uh, I know a lot of people experience that in the audience, yeah. you know, the similar situations. I, I had a... a, a think remembering, um, we were performing uh, in 2001 when September 11th happened, and we were off, I think, for a couple of days. Mm -hmm. All of Broadway shut down, and then we opened back up. And, you know, up until that time, the, at the New Amsterdam Theater, there was never an empty seat. Never, ever. There were people waiting outside in case somebody, you know, had to go home in the middle of the show to, <laughs> to get in the theater. And that first show back after 9-11, and there were maybe a thousand people in the audience, and the orchestra not full whatsoever, uh, playing Simba and having to, to sing Endless Night, Where Has the style, Starlight Gone, Dark Is the Day, and then seeing the, the conductor try to hold it together and lose it, and me try to hold it together. By the time you get through with that song, I know that the light must end, the night must end, I know that the sun will rise. Mm -hmm. Anytime art, I find, gives you an immediate sort of context by which you can process all of it. It doesn't heal it, doesn't fix it, but it, but it creates a, a means by which you can just go through the experiencing of all of that. It's so cathartic and it's so, it, be, it can be uplifting. If any, at, at the very least, it can be um, comforting you know, while you process Yeah, and, on, and on top of that, we have um, had a few, uh, it be, you know, it shows an educational element of the show, a few parents bringing in their kids. Mm. I think it, it must be the first time there's a medium of educating a kid about loss, yeah. about something will happen later on, whether it doesn't happen now. You remember when granddad passed away, this is what had sure. happened. So it becomes a huge educational element yeah. also. And there's also, um, as you know, South, um, South Africa plays a big part in the Lion King because of the music and culture. Uh, for some of us, our generation, we uh, were not able to express ourselves through art during apartheid. So we started acting and singing in, in small churches and schools and everything. That is as far as we could go. And for us, some of us were motivated to use the tools of, of theater, music, to fight in the struggle. And in the Lion King, we've, I always find a similar situation whereby Nala has to run away to regroup, to fight against the hyenas when they've taken the kingdom. <laughs> and she and eventually finds Simba and come back with Simba and rally the troops and fight and eventually uh, regain the kingdom uh, from the hyenas. And for me, it's always been a signature that South Africa, in 1994, we voted for the first black president, uh, Nelson Mandela. And that always brings, because we left South Africa when things were still really harsh. Right, and, yeah. and, and I remember when they left, we were a little younger. We thought we were never going to see them again. Yeah. You know, we come right after. And when I left South Africa, when you come back, you still had to go through a lot of grilling as to where have you been, who did you speak to, what did you do? 
Right. And that, to me, is always a reminder to myself that through all of that, the country today is in a better state. So it is. it does relate to what everyone is going through. And yeah. given the state of the different democracies in the world, you eventually come in a full circle into how things are supposed to be. That's right. the story. I think that's a wonderful segue. <laughs> uh, at this time, it's time for another number, y'all. You ready for that? Yeah. Um, can we welcome Joelle uh, Carey and Adrian Walker, uh, Simba and Nala, singing Can You Feel the Love Tonight? enough for this restless wanderer just to be with you. South African performers have worked on The Lion King around the world for the past 20 years. Uh, we're lucky to have four of them today. I'd love to hear from all of you about the impact uh, the South African performers in South African culture on the show, and especially the four of our South African brothers and sisters, what your experiences with the show have been like. Uh, for me, uh, being able to sing South African music uh, in these audiences all over the world, you know, uh, and it brings all these beautiful harmonies that we're known for as South Africans. We are known for singing beautiful harmonies. So um, the Lion King brings that, you know, to these audiences all over the world. And um, and the, the fact that now they have employed so many thousands, thousands of young people from South Africa who would have never gotten a chance you know, to go to an international stage and perform. Mm. So that's what Lion King brings for my people. Now, did you also per, uh, participate in the Serafina production? Yes, no. I was in, uh, when, when I in first film? came in this, in this country, I was in the show called Serafina during apartheid. So, uh, which was different because that show was more about the struggle. It was just a heavy show. It was sad, you know, we were just fighting for our freedom. Right. So we were more like the ambassadors of South Africa to come here 
and tell the world what was going on. And now I enjoy being in the Lounge King because the music is exciting, it's uplifting people, it's happy music, you know. So for me, those two different experiences, and I enjoy being here and be able to just experience this with everybody. Yeah. Um, the one other thing that uh, makes me laugh all the time is that when the audience comes in and they ask you a question like, well, is what you're singing, is it real? Is it a real language? That clicking thing, you, 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 also, you always uh, uh, do a great lip syncing. Like, no, it's a real language. Do it for you. Yeah. <laughs> do it for you. I think you have to do a little bit. Do it. Barakili kotele mukoko, okokwa, nkima kakwa, bakaba, nabaka, tetu, nat. Don't clap. That's her actual language. That's just her talking. It's not that impressive. <laughs> she just gave you her grocery list for tomorrow. <laughs> I mean, uh, on, 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 the, um, on the other side of it, I think it is important. I always highlight this because for most of us, I mean, I think the four of us here, none of us have actually went to a music school or a, a theater or anything. We've never went to school for that. I said earlier, it was a tool for us to, to fight against the struggle. And uh, for most of the singers and actors and dancers, South Africa, singing and dancing is not really a job. It is uh, a, a hobby. Half the country knows how to sing. So when you go up on stage, it's not like they want to be entertained. They want to judge you because at least someone there is waiting to tell you that, oh, I can do that better than you. And if you say, can you, they say, try me. And they will literally come up and prove that. It is, it is a beauty that we have that we grow up hearing this music because Culture, there are songs culturally for everything that are written by random people. I mean, um, they are mostly public domain. So we grow up hearing these harmonies whenever there's anything. That's why sometimes it's a little offensive, but it is reality. Whenever you see African kids on television, they're dancing and happy and singing. It is how we grow up. That's how we grew up. If you take it out of the political content and just look at it, and if you go to Africa, the first thing you see will be children following and chasing after the car, seeing a person, That's, and singing and dancing. And if you ask why they're dancing, sometimes there's no explanation. It's just joy. So most of us, this is amazing that you're calling me, you're putting me on a plane, and you're telling me that you're going to pay me for singing and dancing. So. I mean, it's, it's, it's amazing, and, and, and over the, I mean, all the 300 people, it's amazing to us that as in, from the si side of art perspective, that we have been able to get jobs that we would not get in South Africa, just because they can just grab anybody and just put them in something, you know? <laughs> so it, it's, it's very special to us, and we always appreciate it, and I have to highlight that. Um, when it's Lion King started, South Africans were supposed to be only for six months, and go and leave the country. Yeah. And Julie Tamer, together with Tom Schumacher and their cast of the American cast actors and dancers, <laughs> they fought. They said, if these people leave, we, we are stop. not doing this. <laughs> that's it. And that's how we got to stay as South Africans in the show. People like him and the rest of the original cast members fought to make sure that we remain in the show. And that we are forever grateful for to you guys and everybody else who come and see the show. Yeah. yeah. You, 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 you can cut me a check when we're done. Um, <laughs> joking. <laughs> Not really. Okay. Um, uh, a lot of uh, talk ha uh, about diversity in casting, obviously, with, with shows like Hamilton, uh, that certainly is, is one of the first things that comes to mind because uh, founding fathers weren't black. Um, <laughs> but... <laughs> What, what you had just alluded to, um, people don't realize that The Lion King was at the forefront uh, when it comes to uh, diverse casting on Broadway. Um, one, of the, one of the things that comes to mind is when I graduated from college in 95, there were only two shows that I could have been cast in on Broadway. And one of them was, would have been because my face, I could have been painted in cats, but nobody was trying to dance like that. And then, um, <laughs> and then Showboat was the other show. And they weren't trying to cast me as no you know, riverboat slave, because uh, I was too light. Um, then Lion King comes along. 
And it's the longest running black show, predominantly African American show in the history of Broadway. Uh, I know that because of the, the Disney name, it's not commonly sort of, uh, it's not assumed that that is a, a character, characterization of the show. But not only is it, you know, predominantly African American and South African, um, I've always found that this show serves as a beacon of light for, for, for young performers who, of color who are coming out of these amazing programs and have, don't really have a show that they can you know, look to and say, I want to be on Broadway, I want to be in that show, that's a place for me. Um, and I think that Broadway has gone a long, to, a long way to, to, to start, at least start the process of including more, more and more uh, people of co actors of color. It's actually very interesting you say that because I'm actually the Chris Jackson track. God so 20 years later, I do his job that he did when oh, he first came. Really? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm your track. Yeah, That's so, amazing. And, um, and it was, the, and it is the same thing. You know, when there, I'm just slightly behind uh, Chris in, in in age when it came to casting, but at least I did have the Lion King because there was that when I was in school when I first started undergraduate and learning theater, people didn't quite know where to place me either sure. because I. They would, you know, you'd go into a casting and they would always say, can you be a bit more urban? Like that's always like the, there's certain, yeah. Or we want to do it again, but a little bit more street. You know what I mean? And then, so there weren't a lot of, there wasn't a lot of diversity even within the type of roles you could be considered for. And then Lion King came along and changed that for a lot of people. And you can see the ripple effects almost immediately if you just look at years in following on Broadway castings, all of a sudden you were getting called in for different types of roles and all of a sudden you were being considered for a whole array of characters that you weren't seeing just the year before. It was, in, it was incredible. Yeah, I, I think that the, the, the future will bear this out, but you know, a young Lynn Miranda saw me at Simba two years before he graduated college. Uh, I have to believe that every time a young, especially a young artist, or a young producer, or a young casting director, someone who hasn't established themselves yet, comes to see a show and has a moving experience, it, it, open, it expands their, their horizon of, of possibilities so that when they do get into the place of their career, their, in, their place of influence, uh, their place of employment in, the, in a company such as this, it broadens the perspective and it gives everyone just a, a, a more uh, realistic view of what the world looks like. And I think that's, that's obviously art at its best, right? Um, I want to get to the funny stuff that happens behind the scenes because everybody always wants to know what happens when a, when, a when a giraffe falls going across the savanna. Uh, I have a funny story. About yeah, that. yeah. Please share. <laughs> share. Yes, please. So uh, we have two dancers who uh, portray giraffes, and in order, in order to get dressed in them, they are put on a, a ladder and still start put on their arms and their legs. So, and they're attached. And right? they're attached, yeah. like that you can't get out of them. <laughs> so they're in the last number, and all, all the way through the last number, and in the bowels as well. So I guess this one guy was feeling a bit extra that day. <laughs> and he started rearing up, and he went back and <laughs> fell, and he's flailing back like this. And there's nothing you can do, so the stage manager comes on, grabs him, Tracks pulls him, him off stage, <laughs> curtain comes down. Uh, any, any other things come to mind uh, that, that might be good for I a giggle? Remember, I remember because usually they track the giraffes and uh, whatever that fell on stage. One day I fell on stage. Oh, this is and <laughs> what happened is when we sing one by one, you know, the second act, these costumes were so long, so long, like you had to lift them up when you go up the stage. For some reason that day I was into myself and <laughs> just happy and Feeling excited, it. walking up the stairs, and then I tripped on the costume. And I'm the last person to go on stage. And that moment I fall on the stage, and this costume is under my legs. Now I'm trying to get up, I'm trying, and, and it's the silk. So I'm trying to get up, I'm looking at, he's my husband, and he was singing on stage, I'm looking so he can, get me, but he's like, <laughs> so he was like, no, I'm singing my song. Right now. <laughs> so, so I'm looking, I'm like looking around, I'm like, oh my God, I can't get this costume off my feet. So I'm wrapped around and I see the stage man keeps saying, I'm like, I can't leave. 
leave. <laughs> so finally, I get off the stage. We go downstairs in the bunker. Everybody, you could hear a pin drop. Everybody like, didn't know. They wanted to laugh so hard at me. But everybody's looking if I'm okay. They did, yeah, they did the check. Like, is, she just, hurt? <laughs> is she hurt? If she hurt, she hurt, it's not so funny. So I started, she hurt, yeah. she? when I started <laughs> laughing, everybody started laughing. And they said, I look like the commercial. I'm falling. I can't get up. <laughs> So, but I was okay. I was okay. But I never fell again. <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. Okay, I think at this point we're going to open up the uh, floor for uh, some questions. Do any of you guys have any questions for this wonderful cast? Y'all know everything. <laughs> Y'all are full from eating too much at lunch. Hi. Please give us your name and Hi. ask your question. Hi, I'm Jess. Hi, Jess. Uh, thank you so much for coming. This has been amazing. Um, so I work on our people operations team, which is what we call HR, human resources. And we spend a lot of time thinking um, about how we build really effective teams and how we make people feel included and welcome, especially when they're new to, or, to an organization. Um, are there any norms or things that you do when you have new cast members come in to try and create like a cohesive team? Uh -oh. Ooh. Uh, yeah. You know, I, I don't know, but maybe this will work for your team. Um, I, I'm, I'm going to share this with you. So in my dressing room, so my dressing room is split into two. It's singers on the other side and it's dancers on the other side. So right off when you go up in this, in this board that's in here is the hills with different sizes of high heel shoes. We put the men. There. So the men, the men, high heel shoes. So what happens is that when you're new, uh, we make you believe that everyone who's in the room has actually put on these high heels and actually vogue all around the, dr the dressing room. So what happened is that this is just a way of, we want to see if you're brave enough to embarrass yourself or to entertain us because that way <laughs> we've got some trouble. So we all, like, usually when half hour comes, everybody go out and, and warm up and maybe there's two or three people. When you're coming in, you're a new person, we wait for the stage manager to bring you, to introduce you, and we, let, we ask them to leave. And then we put the pop music on, we let you try the, 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 the high heel, and then you've got to walk around. That the room just in palms, just you have to go off. Living and if you're a little life. tight, we got a couple of guys that are already in their high heels to show you what you're supposed to do. <laughs> so, I mean, I think you might just try that. I mean, it might, might work. I don't know. I'll raise this with our executives. Ah, that's a good team builder, right? Yes. One of the things that I love about this show so much is that. Along with, I think, only Paul Simon's Graceland, it's the best example of putting South African music in front of a mainstream audience. And I know for the South African performance, that's just kind of like you mentioned, it's just another day. Uh, but for the non-South Africans, was there any adjustment period getting used to kind of those funky harmonies, maybe some other stuff that you weren't really familiar with? Uh, you know, they asked us. Oh, non-South African. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Pick one. You have I'll, to be either yeah. South African or non-South African. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. Okay. I'll start. <laughs> um, when I started, uh, I started a while ago. I've been in different companies. I started, I think, in 2003. Um, they had this thing where they were doing master classes before you got cast. So you would come in for like six weeks, I think, and you would, they would teach you a little bit of the language, they would teach you some of the songs. So by the time I got into the show, it, it was, I, I think I learned the show in two weeks, so it was, it was about, it was a bit easier for me. I don't know what the process is for you guys. I understood the harmonic structure of it all, but marrying that with the language was extremely taxing vocally. And I, I went home after the third day, of course we were singing for about four hours in the morning and then we were moving in the afternoon. Everybody there had already had a master class of some sort of, had done the workshop. I had never even heard, I'd seen the movie but I hadn't sung any of it, you know. So in, in the, in, there are certain American, African American vocal traditions in the church that you will find a lot of the same harmonic structures there, but, but linguistically speaking, my chords were bleeding by the time the, the second or third day was there, and I and I had, I was fresh, but I just didn't I didn't know how to pace myself inside that kind of music, and it took a while. But once once you know I got into it, I still I remember it so vividly. But once I got into it, it it, it started to flow a lot easier. Yeah. 
Any more questions? Hi. Hi. Thank you so much for being here. I am the biggest fan. Okay, maybe not the biggest. Um, <laughs> but I am a huge fan. I have a five-year-old daughter. The minute she turned three, I had to have her watch The Lion King Yay. because it's such a great story and it still resonates so much. Um, so I guess my question is, you know, we are in jobs where we are not facing so many people on a daily basis. And, you know, there are days when I don't like what I do and it's okay. You have to be on stage and you have to entertain regardless of how you feel. So what do you do when you're not in the mood? What are those tricks? Good question. I, I couldn't wait to answer that question. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, this is the motivation. Yeah. You look at faces while you... We are fortunate that we have a show where, where everything doesn't start backstage. The show starts... Half of the people who are in the cast, they start within the audience. So the moment you enter, you already feel the vibe. You, you, there's no way in me that I would say, I'm tired today, I cannot do it. But you, you, it just takes you looking at two, three people within the audience, and that's it. That's it. And that yes, of course, you, sometimes you come to work and just like normal people, you get, you're tired and you don't feel like doing it. But what motivates you more? By walking, by like we open the show, walking down the aisle, and you see these faces happy and some of them crying because of just happiness of seeing all the animals. It motivates you to just want to do this more and more with a good spirit and happiness. The other funny thing is um, I know that a lot of people when they come to see the show and they like, they're thinking that it's a you know, kid's show. But it's one thing when you come, the curtain goes up and you start singing and you sing adults being the one crying and like, oh my God, look at that. Oh my God, it's like little kids, it's like, it, it motivates you, you know, makes you think that you're doing something great. I'd say also uh, our other actors. Uh, we have a lot of different social cues that we'll do with each other um, <coughs> backstage, yeah. you know, uh, basically every day. It's like, if I, don't, if I don't do that social cue with an actor, I will get, you know, they'll, they'll be so angry with me. <laughs> um, so, you know, uh, the other actors will, will definitely lift you up if, you, if you're not feeling it. And I'm definitely one of those people who's like, yay, look. <laughs> Thank you. I think, I think that theater in general provides a framework by which when you take the discipline that you develop doing a show, uh, you fall into a rhythm with that. And, and there's comfort in that rhythm. There's, 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 uh, you can know what to expect. Uh, so that when you have a cold or when you have a pulled hamstring or it's just like a baseball player taking swings in the cage, like there's just something about the routine of it all. It puts you in the in the place that you need to that you need to do, and because we're expressing ourselves, uh, there's also a great release, a great catharsis that happens by just going through and and allowing yourself to feel what you're what you're feeling and, and tell the story, and, and be as dedicated to it as you can. Well, we have time for one more question. Okay. Uh, hi, I'm actually visiting from the San Francisco Bay Area, and. I'm here today, so I, I like got in at six o'clock this morning. So I this is all for you. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> um, my question is: so when I was younger, I was actually like I wanted to be like you guys. I wanted to be on Broadway, but then now I'm here. So um, my question is: how would you? Um, what would you tell a young aspiring actor, especially like an actor of color, to like? What would you tell them to never give up on their dreams if they were trying to pursue this type of career? Mm. I would definitely say that to. I always say to young people when I work with them that everything you learn is important. Um, I am the opposite of you. I went to school for computer science originally <laughs> and switched to theater because <laughs> they didn't take back my scholarship. That's just too meta, I can't. Exactly. So like, can't. that's spooky. Um, but also, I, uh, you know, I, uh, as a young person, I had immigrant parents, so they're like, you will do everything. You will play instruments, you will speak languages, you will do all these different things because we're in America and we're gonna do well, you know? And um, so all those classes and things that I took, I never really thought would be important, but the great thing about theater is it's so collaborative. So you never know when, it's only a matter of time before a show comes along that is gonna need your expertise in coding, I mean, or, or in, playing the saxophone or in, I mean, when Lion King started, we didn't think that there would be a hugely successful rap-based musical about the founding of this nation. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it, it's only a matter of time, so you have to be, when you're young, or when you're not, throughout your whole life, you have to be a sponge and constantly absorb and take every opportunity that is given to you to grow and to learn, because it will be applicable to art at some point. 
because that's what makes art great. That's what keeps it changing. Broadway is the pinnacle of commerce and art sort of and you know crashing into one another. So it's a very specific thing. I tell anyone, anyone, no matter what line of work that you're in, pursue your passion. So if performing is something that you care about and that some of you just wake up in the morning, I gotta do this, go to work, pay your bills, but there are lots of places to be an artist. Do you know there's lots of different ways to do that? Uh, there are lots of communities that completely welcome that. Um, and I know, especially in the Bay Area, there, there's a hundred theaters out there. Get your life, man. <laughs> Will do. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> uh, so, guys, it's time. It's time for another song. As, as we kind of, you know, just like in the show, we kind of wrap it up. We're gonna do a little, uh, a little circle of life. I think. Uh, what y'all think? Y'all ready to do a little circle of life? I think we can do that. Can we just give it up another round of applause for our amazing cast? director and arranger Jim Abbott. Ladies and gentlemen, the Lion King.